I have no doubt that what we try to accomplish with our sister city plan will become an accepted in all of Major League and professional sports. Major League Baseball simply isn't prepared to cross that threshold right now. We remain sincerely grateful to all of those who helped us put this plan together and advocate for its boldness and to keep the Rays in Tampa Bay and return baseball to Montreal. The open-mindedness and strong support we receive from civic, business, and political leaders across Tampa Bay and up in Quebec is greatly appreciated. To all of you, please know how thoroughly disappointed I am that we won't be able to see this through. We're indebted to you. You embody the vision and spirit that would have united and uplifted two incredible forward-thinking North American regions. You dared to dream big alongside us, adding your hearts and minds in precious time to our efforts. You embrace the potential over the status quo. You embody what it means to be a Tampa Bay Ray. I want to thank each of you individually. However, the list is too long for this setting today. We also appreciate the passionate members of our Rays community who are not fans of the Sister City pursuit, yet were willing to listen and engage in constructive, thoughtful dialogue. I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge and thank our partners and friends in Montreal, Pierre, William, Richard, Danielle, and in particular, Stephen Bronfman, who has been a cohort marvelieux. Despite this result, I know our camaraderie and friendships will endure. Thank you for sharing with us your love of baseball, Montreal's desire for its return. I'm grateful to our Rays employees for their typical yet extraordinarily creativity and determination. They took a spark of an idea and fashioned it into a plan, and they put us in a position to make this groundbreaking plan a reality. There's a virtue in pursuing something you believe in, and I am proud of our efforts to determine that these years of pursuit and ingenuity will lead to something positive for our organization. Our ball club is coming off three consecutive postseason appearances, including a trip to the World Series, two American League titles, and a 100-win season. This is due to our players, their hard work and devotion, and to our entire organization for supporting them, helping them flourish, and propelling the team to near-magical performances. We are all looking forward to our 2022 club and the season ahead. That's what make what it's really all about, and that's why I'm still encouraged despite today's discouraging news. The Rays organization will be one that continues to make Tampa Bay proud, both on and off the field. We're interwoven into the fabric of our region, and we are daily contributors to what makes Tampa Bay so unique. Our goal is and always has been for the Rays to thrive here in Tampa Bay today for, and in future generations as well. Right now, we are hard at work preparing for another memorable season and executing on our mission, energizing our community through the magic of Rays baseball. I appreciate your time today, and I do welcome your questions. We'll now open up the press conference to questions. As a reminder, please use the raise hand feature and limit yourself to one question and one follow-up. We'll start with Mark Topkin of the Tampa Bay Times. Stu, you, uh, you've said before that the possibility of a full-time home in Tampa Bay did Mark, not affect you. The possibility of a full-time home in Tampa Bay has looked like it hasn't worked before. You've said that a number of times. What would have to happen for it to work this time, assuming that that's your first step here? Sorry, we're having some tech issues here. We're not hearing uh, what's coming through on your end. Try that one more time. OK, there third time's a charm, gotcha. Mark. Thank you. Go ahead, Mark. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe the fourth time's a charm. Can we try somebody else before Mark? Because maybe it's him. I, I, I don't. Mark is sort of there, but not. So let's just see if the issue is with, with you or it's likely on our end, though, all right? We'll, we'll get you second. Yep, let's go to Jay Racker with WDAE. Uh, Stu, I just wanted to ask you because I know we saw the thing with all the business leaders recently and, and the, and the uh, you know, their support of the split city plan. But do you feel that there's a disconnect between you guys and, and the fan base? Because you hear a lot of the fans, a lot of the, you know, the blue collar nine to five working guys that did not seem on board with this plan. Do you feel there's a disconnect there? Uh, I don't feel there's a dis disconnect. I, I'm a fan as well, and I understand people want their team here all the time for 81 games. Uh, I totally got it. I saw it. I did what I thought was best, and we did what we thought was best for the future of the team here in Tampa Bay and for the organization. So we're, we're really, as I said in this opening statements, you know, people did disagree with us, and I understand it, and we, and we respected and listened to the, the dialogue. You know, we answered some of these uh, issues, 
And, um, you know, anybody who's a Rays fan is, is aces in my book, as we say. Thanks for the question. All right, we'll go back to Mark Topkin with the Tampa Bay Times. All right, can you hear me this time? Okay. Oh, gotcha. There we go. Thank you. Uh, assuming you're going to now look again in the Tampa Bay area, you've, you've said before that it did not look like it would work. It was not something you're interested in. You didn't think it would work. What would have to happen this time for a full-time new stadium in the Tampa Bay area project to work? Yeah, we're certainly going to be uh, exploring things in the Tampa Bay region. I've said since I've owned the team for uh, 17 years that our goal has been to keep it here uh, for generations and generations. We have tried in the past to build in St. Petersburg. We tried to build full season in Tampa as well. So uh, the idea that it wouldn't work completely uh, is not necessarily the way our approach has been. We felt, we felt that this was a much better approach and something that ensured it, that it would work. We expect to, and we'll see the, uh, you know, how the stands look this year, and uh, the support we get, and you know, that's going to help inform us as well uh, going forward on uh, on our plans. We'll go to Adam Barry with okay, MLB.com. Hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry Mark. Go ahead with your follow-up, and then we'll go to Adam Barry. Okay. Is is there anything as you sit here? I know you're going to probably need to regroup for a little while, but. Tampa, St. Pete, anything that's on the table, off the table, anything you you would lean toward? No, we look. We you know through all of this going on, we know Tampa had had some plans in the background as well. You know for a full season, per, per, you know potentially. We know St. Petersburg and Pinellas County have been working on that as well. So we're going to be open to uh, you know to ideas and thoughts. But certainly today is not the day for us to be commenting on it or approaching it. But in, you know in due time. Adam? Stu, when you spoke to the executive council at the owners' meetings, uh, you said the commissioner and MLB were pleased and encouraged with the plan. What's your sense of what's changed in the time since then? Yeah, well, they, again, this has had a two and a half year timeline, and, uh, you know, it's it started uh, with a lot of head scratching. As, uh, look, my staff here as well, when this idea had, had come up originally, however, it germinated. There was head scratching, and you know, we, when we had conversations with people, 10, 20 minute conversations, we found them understanding the, uh, the upsides to all of this and coming on board. And I think that was the case with Major League Baseball as well. Uh, you know, these fellows understood it was good for the game, and things had progressed nicely, and uh, things had been working nicely. And then uh, recently, it just sort of took a, a turn to the south, and um, we don't precisely know why, but I think at the end of the day, it just wasn't anything MLB was prepared to go forward with. We'll go to Chris Torello, Bay News 9. <clears throat> hey, Stu, can you hear me? Yes, hi, Chris. How are you? Hi, Stu. So um, is, it all, is it all in on Tampa, like you just said about now the season and seeing how fans do, or is there a possibility of, of looking elsewhere as well besides just Tampa full-time? Well, it, it was all in on this last plan, I'll tell you that. And those who know me and have been around me, you know, I'm not a – Necessarily an all-in guy. We always keep one eye on the present and one on the one on the future. This was something where we really just, you know, completely pushed our chips in on here for uh, for the sister city. It was a bold uh, concept, uh, but it was something that we thought would have been incredibly rewarding for for baseball, for the players, uh, and for the fans in both areas. Again, those were our thoughts. Uh, now going forward, you know, we're going to regroup and, uh, as I said, and see where things are, um, and we'll consider a number of things. I'm sure, you know, as time goes by. Just to follow up, you, you know, you talked about being a fan yourself and, you know, you've been very honest about the fans and attendance and, and all that. Quite honestly, do you believe the Bay Area and its fans deserve a full-time baseball team? I believe, I believe they deserve a baseball team. There's no question. Personally, I happen to think that uh, partial seasons are going to be the wave of the future in professional sports. And I think it's something that probably would have served this community and other com communities well. That doesn't rule out the option of doing a full season here as well, though. Henry Queen, Tampa Bay Business Journal. Hello, Stu. I was just wondering uh, what we have to say to the executives and the Chambers of Commerce that kind of rallied behind the uh, Sister City plan. What would you say to them uh, after this, uh, you know, this development? Yeah, look, I, I tried to address a little bit of it here today, but I appreciate the question. Uh, there are going to be some great conversations. These are people who 
I will tell you, there wasn't. There were very few, if any, people that we spoke to initially who were in support of this, who got it right. So you'd all sort of be pleased to know that the people who who were supporting us here were people whose minds were changed or, or who went along with open minds and and went along and saw that we had a, a plan that could be really great for this area. Uh, you know, forgetting what it would mean for Montreal and what it would mean for Major League Baseball, their hearts and their minds are in what they thought was going to be best for this area. And I look forward to having conversations with them because I know each of them is passionate, clearly, about, about having Major League Baseball and having the Rays here in the region. Jeremy Filoso. Hello. Hi, guys. Thanks Hi, for taking the time today. I uh, hope you hear me well. Uh, obviously, I'm coming at it from the Montreal angle, so I'll have a first question and a follow-up. What was the reaction from your partners in Montreal when, the, when the, the news broke? Do you feel like you said earlier in the press conference that you still want to help that? And uh, I'll have a follow-up right after. I, I got most of it. A little bit broke up, but I think I got the gist of it. Uh, they were as, if not more, devastated than I was at the news. The most difficult part of, of, of delivering this news was, uh, or, or hearing it, was knowing that I have to speak to these, you know, to Steve Bronfen and a few of the folks up there. Um, and that's been, quite frankly, the most disappointing part of all of this was that we knew, you know, what it's like to a region and an area that's lost baseball that desperately wants it back, uh, that probably has earned the right to have baseball back, but that's just one man talking right now. I can tell you, uh, the, the fellows who were working on this in Montreal were doing it on a civic behalf. There was nothing that they were doing from a, a personal standpoint. This was purely about trying to do right for Montreal, for Quebec, and they, they really should be held in high esteem for what they did, and I look forward to having a, a long relationship and friendship with the fellows up there. And just a follow-up, um, they were uh, scheduled to uh, uh, unveil stadium plans in the next couple of weeks. Uh, if they do continue to need to be changed uh, because of the fact that it wouldn't be a sister station city plan anymore. Thanks. I, uh, most of it broke up, but if I can't ask you back and if you can nod to me, what you're saying is they were going to have baseball, they were going to have plans for stadium. Do I think those that's, that's a stadium that can hold up for a full season if they try to eventually? Is that what you're saying? So, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I, I've, I've been privy to the, to the stadium plans. Yes, we, we, we have been, uh, we've been working on them as well. Uh, that remains to be seen. I, I, you know, I can't comment, but uh, it was going to be a facility that was built to handle events year-round, all sorts of events, something that was going to be for the public, same as we had here uh, in Tampa Bay as well, something that was going to be approachable and usable um, and, and accessible to the public, not just for the number of baseball games we were going to have and all the other events for, like, for instance, here in Tampa Bay, rowdy soccer uh, and, you know, many, many other events and some spring training as well, potentially. So I know that they've got something and they had something planned that would be of uh, great civic value up there. We'll go to Frederick Daigle. Yes, thank you, gentlemen. Frederick Daigle from Canadian Press here in Montreal. Uh, uh, what what is your uh, what is your timeline, Mr. Sternberg? You got a lease with the Tropicana Field uh, up to the end of the 2027 season. What is your timeline to finding a full time house, a full time home for the uh, Rays right now in the Tampa Bay region? Uh, a, a great question. I am going to miss the accents, I will tell you. <laughs> uh, you know, you and, the pre and Jeremy, the previous fellow. Um, look, we, we're going to have to hit the ground running um, for, for opening day in 2028. We know that's been the case. Uh, you know, since I've taken over the team, we, we had plans in 2007, 2008 that would have pushed us forward maybe 10, 15 years. We had a plan in 2017 that... Uh, uh, would have likely pushed us forward a few years, and now we're going to have to come up with something that's going to push it forward potentially or just have us have opening day most likely in 2028 in a different venue. 
And if I may follow with that, you talked about the attendance earlier. Um, we've had the same talks in Montreal at the start of the two years 2000 when, when attendance was low and that they were looking for a new place for a new, a new stadium. At, at what point is, is, is too much not enough, if I could say? I mean, you got a winning team for the past 10 years almost, and people are not showing up. At, at what time are you going to change your mind about this market? Good question. Uh, as you can see, I've, I've got a stadium behind me. Uh, there was nothing more I'd like to have happen than, than you know, just, just stay here. <laughs> you know, we can stay here for, for 30 more years potentially, right? But uh, it, it, for some reason or, or what reason, it seems to be contributing uh, to the lack of attendance. At least, the, you know, that's, that's the belief here. Um, so we are going to be looking for, for a new venue. Um, there's never a kind of, time, kind of time where you say never is never. But, um, you know, we're, we're going to keep trying here in this market and we're going to do our best as we have been and focus on putting a winning product on the field. And I still do believe that uh, that the region is is willing to and able to and is looking forward to supporting us in every way it can. Thank you. Thank you. John Romano, Tampa Bay Times. Hey, Stu. Um, you, you got permission from the executive council a couple of years ago to explore this idea. You've invested a lot of time, money, effort into it. Um, as you said, you've gotten a lot of community leaders behind you that, that bought into this plan. At this point, do you feel somewhat, for lack of a better term, betrayed by your fellow MLB owners? That's a word. That's a word. Um, I understand you know, I understand that it works. I, I've been on the council now for a number of years since Rob had joined and I've been in the game since 2005, 2004, while I was still here with Vince Namoli. Uh, you know, the, the game is peculiar in a lot, in a lot of senses and uh, things happen for a lot of reasons, sometimes for the good, but you know, always with good intentions for the game itself. We just quite often have differing opinions on what that might mean. You know, faster game, you know, keep things the way they are, change things, pitch clocks, no pitch clocks. The most important thing are that fans and, and folks like yourself all and, and owners and players and all of those who work in the organizations and minor leagues all care about the game. And if we all keep that front of mind and first and foremost and care about the game of baseball, it'll be in good stead going forward. Has MLB changed its opinion of Tampa Bay as a full-time market? I've seen it swing around. Look, 20 years ago, they thought it was a, a you know a top five, ten market in the game. When I came in in 2004. Uh, you, in particular, and many others like you, not incorrectly, but felt that all we had to do was reach out to the community, win baseball games, and and that people would flow into our, our you know beautiful building here. Um, you know, most of that stood, except for the flow, and uh, you know, so it's ebbed and flowed over time. There's no doubt that MLB and others in, in the country have taken notice on what's happening in Tampa Bay and the growth that's happened over the last decade. And that's certainly part of the equation as we move forward. Uh, the way that we'll see that is if that growth finds its way you know, into our stands and, and in sponsorships and in, in viewership and everything else that goes along with it. Scott Smith. Thanks, Stu. Um, in that regard, are you concerned that there may be at this point uh, raised stadium fatigue among the fan base? Uh, it's a great question. There absolutely is. And I will tell you, there's raised stadium fatigue within the organization. Uh, the people who have been affected by this most are, are you know, are us. <laughs> you know, I'm, take, my, take me out of it. I'm, I signed up for this, right? Uh, but, you know, my, our employees here who've worked at this, uh, I've got a group in, in particular, who, uh, Melanie Lenz and, and her, her small staff, that have worked on three stadiums, including a spring training site. Uh, she and others have been working tirelessly at this for 15 years now. So absolutely it exists, but I can promise to you and assure you that I won't elect, uh, allow that to affect uh, our approach and the outcome of, of what happens. Uh, we always seem to come up with some new ideas and new approaches. That's just our way, and, and it's ingrained in the organization. And we're going to be aggressive, but also respectful as possible as we go forward here. And then just as a follow-up, you've talked about how you, people have been persuaded to the split city concept, how this is the, the wave of the future. So what's, what's the breakdown with, with, with the MLB? Are they not seeing the vision that you have? 
Sometimes people don't like to be first. Uh, you know, there was, uh, it, it was a fellow on this call who, you know, when we went cashless a few years ago, you know, said to me, I get it, I understand it, but why do you have to be first? And he, he was correct. He's absolutely right. It's just people have different approaches to things. And, you know, I, we don't mind being first on things and taking some, some slings and arrows. We've done it on the field. We've been criticized for shifts and criticized for openers and criticized, you know, for the way we run our organization, for criticized at a lot of turns. And then, lo and behold, in a matter of months or years, you know, they get copycatted. Having said that, we have some pretty rotten ideas, um, and we sort of throw them in the, in the wastebasket. But most importantly, we learn from them. And I know that we are going to learn from what happened here uh, and people's approaches. And, you know, if there was a disconnect with our fan base, we're going to try to learn from it. You know, I, I had an idea and a concept of putting up a sign, uh, you know, for the postseason. It was, it was the wrong thing to do. Uh, we learned from it. I apologize for it. And I heard the fans, and I understand it. It doesn't mean anybody was right or wrong necessarily about it, but it was the wrong thing to do. And I, and I was wrong about uh, doing it at that point in the time. But I did want to alert people to the idea that, you know, this was something that we thought was real. Uh, but so we're going to learn from everything. Evan Klosky. Thank you so much. Um, first and foremost, just Stu, what is the, the biggest hurdle with landing a new stadium in Tampa? Because I think the number one thing that fans are saying is just move the team to Tampa. But I think they don't understand what that hurdle is for you guys not not being able to make that such an easy transition. Well, we tried. We, we tried, right? You know, we tried to keep it in St. Pete. Uh, it, it was a different point in time, 2000, 2007, 2008. 2017 and 18 and 19, we tried to do it in Tampa. Um, there wasn't a lot of support, quite frankly. You know, that a lot of the people who spoke up this time in favor of this, maybe they spoke up only because they really genuinely thought the team was, they were going to lose the team. And, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the uh, business people and civic leaders and pol political people we spoke to had a genuine belief that we would lose the team here and that it, 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 this would, might be the only way to keep it here. That wasn't the issue back in 2017 and 18. People just didn't quite get it. And we did take another run at something at that point in time. So maybe if nothing else comes out of this, then the idea that people are, are, are a little more uh, attuned to what's going on or, or move, the, move the ball along, that could be helpful, whether it's in Tampa or St. Peter, you know, in the Tampa Bay region. And then also, again, just to follow up on, on the partial seasons and, and you saying it being the first wave and others not understanding or, or wanting to be first, just why, in your opinion, is that the wave of the future? Because a lot of people don't understand that. So I, I just want to kind of pick at your mind a little bit on that. Yeah, I don't get it either. No, it, <laughs> uh, it, it, so, you know, the, the way things have had over the last 10 years, especially, um, and I think a lot of you know, you know, Tampa Bay is, has been an area that's grown. It's not the only area that's grown in this country, right? There's been a migration from certain areas to other areas. So there are a number of teams in California right now. California's population has sort of remained steady while it's grown in a lot of other areas because the people have moved from California. That's also happened in, in the north. It's happened in historically in the Rust Belts. And I'm sorry if I'm getting a little too wordy about this, but the, the bottom line is you've got municipalities and you've got metro areas that are growing enough that can be and would love to have a professional sports team, whether it's hockey, whether it's baseball, basketball, soccer, football but can't quite support it, especially baseball. 81 games is a lot of baseball games. Eight football games is, is easier to do. It's not easy, don't get me wrong, but you know, Green Bay can do it because it's, so in, in, uh, it, it's been there forever. And also the way the NFL is, is structured that you know, the revenue sharing and, and, and whatnot, central revenue. But if, when you look at, at areas around this country, and I don't want to get into the names because it could get me in trouble, but you know, there are a lot of places, such as Montreal, that can certainly handle half a season of baseball. It remains to be seen whether it can handle a full season. And the same can be said about Tampa Bay. It's a great area. It's an incredible place to live. I live here. All of our staff live here, spread throughout the Bay. Uh, whether it can handle 81 games of baseball and all that encompasses fans every night and, and sponsorships or what, uh, it just hasn't, the, the, you know, that hasn't happened to this point. Thank you. Thank you. Kyle Berger. Not hearing you, Kyle. Unmute, please. There we go. You mentioned earlier, Stu, that uh, 
Uh, you're going to look at the stands this coming year to help inform you of your plans on for the future. Uh, the team averaged about 9,500 fans this past season. Is there a figure that you're looking for on average or for a season that you're looking for in fan attendance? Yeah, look, I, I, I say it. I, I know we're not going to go from 9,000 to 20,000 fans. You know, it's not happening. I understand that. But it, 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 it is informing and to see, uh, look, right now we have consistently been finishing 29th in attendance, you know, maybe soon to be 30th or 28th or whatnot. And that's coming off three postseason appearances, 100 wins, World Series appearance, uh, you know, plus a, a decade or more, more run, you know, of excellence. And... You know, inform, that informs the idea that we should have more people in the stands. I understand we're not going to be 12th in attendance in baseball or 10th. It's just not to be, unfortunately. But it would be ideal if, if off of a 100-win season, uh, you know, we can fall somewhere in number 20 in attendance in Major League Baseball. I don't, you know, think it's too much to ask. Uh, and it's not that we expect it to happen, but these are the indications we'd like to see. Uh, you know, if we can move our attendance rankings up within the game, which is most important, Recognize having a million people come in here. I am I am incredibly thankful for every fan that comes in here and supports us and comes in and follow the games. I speak with them as often as I can. It's just a joy to behold. Uh, it's just the place feels a lot different as well when there are 17,000 people in here as opposed to when there are 6,500. The players feel it. We feel it. The staff feels it. The other fans feel it. Thank you. Thank you. Joe Henderson. Uh, hey, Stu. Um, you, Hello, Joe. How you doing? Um, well, how are you? <laughs> fine, thanks. We, uh, you know, we've been reading a lot and hearing a lot about advanced conversations with Jane Castor and, and the folks in Tampa. Could you give us an idea how far along those conversations are? Have they gone past preliminary or, or are you still in the uh, getting to know each other stage? Uh, no, the, the, the conversations were very far advanced. You know, they're, they're all in, uh, related to, to the sister city concept, however. Uh, and we've had a great relationship with the people in Hillsborough and in Tampa. Um, and I know they were working very hard uh, on their behalf, on our behalf, on the citizens, most importantly, the citizens' behalf uh, in, in trying to do something to, to craft something together uh, that they thought was going to be helpful for the city and for Hillsborough and, quite frankly, for the Tampa Bay region. So we're looking forward, um, you know, as, uh, in the future. I know, you know, our paths are going to cross here and we're going to be engaged with them. And uh, I think they're in a, a, great, a great spot as far as, uh, you know, trying to think this through. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Mark Topkin. <laughs> Demute. Mark, demute. Is Mark Got talking? it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Go. Here we're good. He'll learn. He'll learn. <laughs> it's, I'm new to this. Um, two questions for you. One is, does today's news, which obviously you've had for a couple of days, make you uh, more likely to seek permission from Major League Baseball to explore relocation from their market and or to consider selling the team? Yeah, I, I have. Uh, I, I don't think it, it moves it at all in that direction for me uh, to answer it, uh, but to, to back that up a little bit. I've owned, you know, I, I've owned the team since 2005, my partners and I, and we've got a great group of partners. Uh, they have full trust in, in what, what we do here on a daily basis. Everybody loves being a part of this. Um, I've never had an intention of selling the team. I don't foresee having an intention of selling the team. You never know what the future brings, but that, that hasn't been my intention, and that's the, you know, the walk I've walked all this time. And as far as relocation, uh, it's probably not served me incredibly well, but I have never threatened to move the team uh, out of the region. You know, that seems to be, uh, you know, 101 in the playbook of, of getting stadia and arenas built. And I don't criticize it. It just hasn't been my way to this point. And uh, people have advised me to do that. And um, maybe I'm worse off, you know, not having that advice. But I think introducing that, uh, you know, to an area is just not necessarily practical. And it's not necessarily fair to your fan base, um, but uh, you know I never say never. But uh, you know it's not anything I'm thinking about. Gotcha. And the second question here: What do you think the biggest hurdle is? Is it going to be financing a new stadium? Is it the pinpoint location, a phrase you've used before? Is it the urgency of the community? What can you rank those, or can you isolate one or two that is the biggest issue? 
Yeah, that, that's that's a great question. Look, Mark, obviously, you know, you, you, you've been at this with us, you know, and, and for decades even before before baseball even got here, and, and you're probably more more, more well versed at what it means means I to the fans to bring a, a to bring a team uh, here. Yeah. Um, I, I would think the pinpoint. Bon. Sorry, somebody somebody on please mute if we can. Um, I think the pinpoint location part, which was which was absolutely necessary. Uh, originally um, became less less important when we were talking about a split season that was one of the one of the, uh, the the ideas behind the split season I think going forward the pinpoint location I think I'm gonna have to uh, give a little bit on that one but as far as, uh, as the most important thing it was and still remains the support we see um, you know from sponsors from from uh, from organizations from companies from groups uh, and from attendance. That still is what drives it all. If that is there, building a stadium becomes a very easy, much easier proposition. J.P. Peterson. Hey, Stu. Um, why hey, not thanks for all your support. Just kidding, Jim. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> all just good. trying to give the voice to the fans, Stu. Listen, um, why not Me just too. take yeah. this opportunity to embrace uh Tampa Bay and, and the fans. I mean, you have said that Ybor City is a perfect site. You've said this is a viable market. Um, you, the fans clearly want you here. It's uh, Ken Hagen has told us that there's a lot of support for paying for half the stadium and you paying for half the stadium, just like the Rangers and Braves did. Why can't you just tell the community right now and move forward and embrace the community as a whole, bring everyone together and say, I'll pay for half, you pay for half, our, our, our market is exploding. We have great momentum. It's, the, it's just been named the best sports city in Tampa Bay. Let's all get on this train together and move forward. Why not just make that move and declare now that you're not going to look at, at moving to another uh, market and, and just go all in with us now? Well, we, I did exactly what you're suggesting uh, three years ago. Uh, and as I say, we do learn from our mistakes a little bit. It doesn't mean we can't change our approach, uh, but but let's you know it, it didn't happen 50 years ago. It was three years ago we tried that, uh, and it didn't come close, quite frankly. So perhaps this time through, and our approach, and and the region's approach going through, uh, and as you say, you know, Ebor and Ken Hagen, uh, you know, it's it's a whole region. You know, the the, the people here in St. Petersburg have been in, and and our fans and 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 the leaders here. Uh, almost to a person have been incredibly supportive throughout all of this. Um, and, uh, you know, they have other plans as well, I'm sure. So, uh, we, you know, when the time comes, we'll, we'll, we'll hear everything out. I know that the, back when it, we, they tried before that maybe the financial package wasn't put together as well as you would like, but that seems to have changed now. The market has exploded even more. There was a lot of corporate support. They pledged $16 million a year. The Raise 100 did. I know we were part of that. So I think there is corporate support. You just got 39 guys to sign on to the sister city plan, who I know would all embrace a full season plan. Again, it seems like we could do a really good pivot here and move everybody together with all this corporate support that you've gotten and just make it happen. I, I don't understand. Well, all it, the it, it, as, as you point out, uh, you know, if it's there, then, you know, it will happen. I, I, I would, I would say that you might be a little off on your numbers and, 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 and history of what happened last time, but you know, we might agree to disagree on that, but I can tell you that if, in fact, the numbers are there and if, in fact, all the corporate support is there and that includes, you know, naming rights and sponsorships and everything else and people want to see, well, then there's no reason for us to even consider looking anywhere else. And again, I have never talked about looking anywhere else. And I think that that in itself is something that the fans should take a lot of comfort in uh, because you look around the sport and other sports, uh, as I said, it's happened everywhere before. Thanks, Stu. Thanks for the question. Zach Blodner. Oh. <laughs> hey, Stu, appreciate giving us some time today. Um, I wanted to ask you about the process of the split city plan. Obviously, it was a long time, and, and now we've come to the conclusion of that. Did you learn anything from that process that makes you any more optimistic about a full-time stadium in the Tampa Bay area? Well, if I can ask you a question first, if that's all right. Uh, was there somebody at Major League Baseball that, that uh, helped you break the story today? 
Well, I was told a long time ago you don't reveal your sources, Stu. But uh, I okay. appreciate the right, I'll let, that's that's fair enough. I got I get to ask you a question though. What was your question again? I'm sorry. I know what what so, have I learned along the way? Here? I got you. Yeah, uh, just we, that, we, that, that would make you that would make you more or less optimistic about a full time stadium in Tampa Bay. Yeah. Is there anything you learned from the process that you just went through? I have. I, I what I've learned is that I uh, th for this process this time is that people are. I believe genuinely more concerned about losing the team uh, going forward than they might have been in the past. And I also have learned that people believe that the area, uh, not incorrectly and correctly, is doing much, much better financially in a lot of respects than they might have felt three, four years ago. And that is true, and that's very true around the country, but it's especially true here in Tampa Bay. I appreciate it. Thank you. Sure. All right, we have time for one more. We'll go to Tom Krasnicki. Hey, Stu, can you hear me? Yeah, I can now. Thanks, Tom. How are you? Uh, good. How are you, man? I appreciate your time. Now, okay. you just mentioned before in terms of looking on both sides of the bay and pinpointing a location. Are you going to consider maybe other sites that you hadn't considered before when you were looking at a specific spot, either Ebor or Channel Side or West Shore or any other spot, are you going to reconsider some of the locations that you maybe had not thought of before? Yeah, I, it's, uh, I, again, I'm, I'm jumping, I'm, I'm jumping forward a little bit, but, you know, I know myself, I know what my organization here, we, you know, we, we're open, we're open to listening to things. Uh, and again, uh, as I was, I, I started on Wall Street in the late 70s, and one of the very first things I learned is that markets change. And what that means is, as much as you might be beholden to an idea or a concept, Things over time inform your, your opinions going forward. And as I had said to Mark Topkin earlier to his question, the pinpoint location, while it's still incredibly important, is not nearly as important as it was for a lot of very positive reasons. So uh, I know that when the time comes and we look, we're going to be very, very open-minded. That is a hallmark of what we do here throughout our organization. Uh, and we try to be can-do people and try to get something done. And as you know, you've heard from me, I've always been committed to keeping a team here in Tampa Bay. Everything I've done is to try to keep the team here in Tampa oh, Bay and, and put a great, great product on the field, which I know that we have, have accomplished to this point. And I know we're five years out, so are you feeling that sense of urgency that, you know what, in the next year or so, something needs to happen one way or another? Yeah, I think I think uh, I think whether it's a year or two or 17 months, whatever it happens to be, uh, uh, you know, we're going to have to have a pretty good idea of, of where things are headed. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Great. Thank you, everyone, for joining us and for all the questions. Later today, we'll email a link to download video of the press conference. Apologies for anyone we didn't get to. We just simply ran out of time. Thank Thanks you. I appreciate it. It's good to see you all. Appreciate it.